We're also this morning very privileged to have uh, with us um, a gentleman who has come all the way from South Carolina. And we want to thank Enable America for bringing him here to us. Sergeant First Class Rich Robertson is a gentleman who has been in the service for 20 years or thereabouts. And about five years ago, he was wounded in Iraq, but is now back working at Fort Bragg. But he came down to help us celebrate the ADA today. And as you've heard from some other people, Commissioner Sharp and others, um, we're very proud of all of the people that are both over in Iraq and Afghanistan for us. And those soldiers that are coming back here, some of them being treated at James A. Haley Hospital. And we want to, as part of the ADA, and part of making our community accessible to all and offering opportunities to all individuals, we want to help celebrate those soldiers that are coming back into our community and what they can do for us here and how they can participate with us. Uh, so I really want to welcome Sergeant First Class Rich Robertson um, and have him come and share some comments with us. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Sandra and uh, the Hillsborough County uh, uh, County Commissioners inviting me today to speak with you. That's um, like Sandra said, I've, uh, I'll be hitting 20 years active uh, active duty in the U.S. Army uh, this fall, um, and I'm the result of uh, what the Department of Defense and the United States Army uh, calls COAD, uh, continuation on active duty, uh, where civilian uh, severely injured soldiers. Uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, go through the um, medical evaluation board, and if the individual, if the soldier desires, uh, they're given the opportunity to stay on active duty. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs of the regulation, um, and uh, not everybody meets all the requirements of the regulation to stay on active duty. I was lucky enough uh, to, uh, to meet those requirements. Um, as Sandra was saying, um, about three years ago, um, out in the western desert of Iraq, um, I was uh, conducting uh, my third combat tour uh, with USOCOM, uh, USA the United States uh, Special Operations Command, and I was injured. And uh, my five-year-old daughter, who tells the story, uh, uh, I was injured by a volcano. That, uh, <laughs> and I like her story a whole lot better than mine, so I'm going to tell you that one first. That, uh, I had uh, gotten back uh, from the hospital. And uh, we were back in Fayetteville, and we went to see Dora. And my daughter, who was uh, oh, about three and a half at the time, almost four, uh, we are waiting in line to go see Dora. And uh, a little boy behind us in line asked his mom, said, uh, what's this guy in a wheelchair? You know, and, uh, couldn't hear exactly what he was saying. And his mom says, well, he was, he was probably in an accident, or uh, he fell, um, something like that. And uh, my daughter Ashley overheard that, and she promptly turned on her heel and said, my father was out on a business trip with his paratrooper friends, and he got blown up by a volcano. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better myself, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's um, she's, she and my wife are the primary reasons I'm here before you today. Um, they have helped me uh, immensely. Uh, through the uh, severity of my injury, and um, to be quite honest, you can't uh, you can't really see uh, the scars that I've got. And I've got quite a few. It's, uh, luckily, my uh, my jacket covers them up. <laughs> but um, through uh, programs such as Enable America and uh, Use of SOCOM Care Coalition, um, I've been able to uh, to take something that could be um, a uh, a life changing uh, event in a negative way and turn it to a positive uh, thing. Uh, through Enable America's uh, peer mentorship program, as far as with severely uh, wounded soldiers, um, I meet with uh, similarly injured individuals and talk to them about how I went through what I went through. I don't claim to know that uh, how they feel or what they're going through because I don't. 
each individual handles their injury differently. Uh, but what I can tell them is that, hey, this is what I did. Uh, this is what's helped me through some of the dark days that I've, uh, that I've hit. If, if you were to tell me 10 years ago uh, that I would be in a wheelchair, I'd probably agree with you, just based off the type of work I do for the Army and um, uh, a like for uh, fast cars at the time um, and fast motorcycles, I would have probably agreed with you. Yeah, 10 years from now, I probably will be in a wheelchair. <laughs> But uh, if you told me that I would be still on active duty and in a wheelchair, I would have called you a liar. I would have thought there had been no way. And I think that through the Americans with Disabilities Act um, has been a big reason why the military is coming about and allowing soldiers that are severely injured to stay on active duty. And um, people like myself that were very ignorant of the ADA uh, when it was enacted, uh, are definitely reaping the benefits uh, from programs like that. And I'm very proud that the Department of Defense has, uh, has jumped on board with that by helping uh, the severely injured and, and give them, uh, in many cases, another option. Um, and with that, I really, once again, I appreciate Sandra uh, inviting me down today. And uh, I thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much.